and welcome to Murphy's Garden. So this is part two, follows on from part one, which we did back in February, in which we prepared um, this new area for planting. So we lifted a lot of the turf, we did all the horrible, hard, um, muddy work, and that, that's now done. And now in this video, we're gonna get on with the planting, the exciting part. So I've prepared the ground. First of all, I've edged it, because it is always nice to have a nice, um, clean edged on, edge on the area. So I've done that. And then I've um, just lightly raked over the area with the, the, the um, landscape rake. Um, and that's made a nice um, till, a lovely till from the soil ready for planting. Um, I didn't want to stand on it because um, we've deliberately tilled the ground because it was very compacted. So if I stand on it, I will start to compact it again. So I don't want to do that. So I'm just using boards from the vegetable patch, which I've brought down just to walk on. So um, I've now just found the centre of the square because um, this is a very symmetrical design. Again, um, because it's seen by the house and all this part of the garden, which you see from the house is quite symmetrical. The stuff over there is less so, but this has to be, has to look right, particularly from the windows. So um, I've made, a, made the square, the square, there's a square on both sides, this side and this side. Um, and I've got, now I've got to find the centre. So I've just put string round and I've marked the centre using the string. And then in the center of the string, I've put my pot. Now the pot that I'm using, um, there's one in the middle there, but this is a pot. <clears throat> so this is a plastic pot that came, we actually bought a um, silver birch, um, at the Bachelor multi-stem silver bir birch came in that. Um, and we've taken that out of the pot. We're gonna plant that in the woodland garden, but that's another story. Um, but I just wanted it, wanted this pot. So Alistair has very kindly um, cut a hole in the bottom of it. Um, now Bunny Guinness, um, the garden designer Bunny Guinness, who is fantastic, I really rate her, she's excellent. She does some really good YouTube videos. And um, one of the videos she does is about bottomless pots. So um, you can put a plant in a pot and if it's bottomless, if it's so, if its roots can go through the bottom and into the soil beyond, you can keep it in the pot indefinitely. So that's what I want to do in this case. And the reason why I'm not planting, I could just plant it directly into the ground. But if I did, I'll show you what it would look like. So if I just planted it straight into the ground, it would be um, quite, unremar quite unremarkable. And then I want to plant um, box hedging around a bite. So if I planted high box hedging, it would come up to here on the tree. So you'd lose all that stem and the tree would look a bit kind of pathetic really. So by putting it in a pot, so the pot will go here in the center, the tree will be planted here. I've got to fill the pot in with some soil and the roots can go down, find goodness in the soil and it can stay there indefinitely. And then around a bite, I'm gonna plant the, um, the box hedging. So it will just make the tree look a bit more impactful and, and, and ultimately will lead to a better design, I hope. So um, that's the plan for the middle um, with a box hedging around it. I've got to go and dig the box up, which I'm going to go and do in a minute. And then round the perimeter of here, I thought it would be nice to have some other kind of hedging. I don't want to use box again because we've got enough box. I'm using box in the middle primarily because I've got really good size box so I can put it in and it will immediately hide the pot, I hope, because it's quite big. Um, but round the edge, we can do something different. And I'm thinking, um, I did try and take some cuttings of some Osmanthus because I thought Osmanthus um, would look quite nice. The cuttings um, haven't taken, I don't think they have. They're in the vegetable patch, but I don't think they've taken. But yesterday when we were at the nursery, I saw this plant. And this is a Sarcococca hookeriana purple stem. So um, this is also known as winter box. So I have got some winter box elsewhere in the garden and I took cuttings from it in the winter, in the autumn, and they took very, very easily. So this is a very bushy plant. If I were to buy, I couldn't possibly buy enough to cover all this area. I want to put it right around the perimeter. It would cost too much. So I bought this bushy plant um, with a view to taking cuttings from it and I'll probably just take the cuttings and put them directly into the soil um, rather than put them in pots because we're coming into spring. Um, it probably just take it in here. So that's the plan. We'll do that. Um, I don't know if they get that done today or not, but that's the plan. And then in between where the box will be and the hedge will be, I want to have movement. I want to have nice grasses. Um, and last year we planted some um, gora 
uh, Lyme Dimery, I think that's how you say it. It's actually been renamed. Can't remember the name, something beginning with O, but I'll post that on the screen. But um, we grew that in just in the herbaceous borders and it was absolutely beautiful and it flowered from May right the way through to sort of November time. So it's a really good plant that, that has a very, very long season and blowing in the wind, it will look really nice. So I just had it in clumps dotted throughout the garden and it didn't really do it justice. So I think having a large swathe plant of it here would look really nice. And if I plant it with other, with grasses, perhaps some Verbena bonariensis, which I have got coming up all over the place. So I could take that, put some little seedlings in this area along with the grass and maybe even some like drumstick allium bulbs um, just to sort of punctuate it. But I want this kind of nice sort of meadowy feel um, and that's the sort of look I'm going for. So let's get to work. So I've got my pot in the middle. I don't need the string anymore. I just move that. And then I've also got a wheelbarrow full of of the homemade compost. Um, so now I don't need to put compost all over this area because it's going to have grasses planted in them, and they don't and the agora, which doesn't need. Um, it doesn't need a lot of high fertility. So I'm going to do a mix of homemade compost in here. And the other thing I might do is just add some mycorrhizal fungi to, um, to the soil as well. I'll just put it around the roots of the amylanchia. I'll do a mix of soil and and compost. So we'll just get it up to a good level. It's got some stones in the soil, but that's okay, because that will just add a nice bit of drainage. Right, I will just have to cut off. There's a, a tie on the tree, so I'll need to cut that off. So I'll just cut this off. And I want the plant to be in the centre. So probably about there. Right, I'll just go and get the mycorrhizal fungi. So I'm back again with the um, mycorrhizal fungi. And it just comes in this powder form. And what that does, it helps um, reduce losses during transplanting and quicker, it makes for quicker establishment, improves the drought tolerance and reduces the need for any um, additional fertilizer and makes for more resilient plants. That's what it says on the, on the pot. So all you do is just sprinkle a generous supply of the mycorrhizal fungi onto the roots and then just plant as normal. Don't use any other fertilizer with it because that can undo the effects of the mycorrhizal. So just, um, I'm just gonna put it in the pot and then cover it over with um, a mixture of soil and the garden compost. And the other thing we'll do is um, drive a larger bamboo cane that will go right the way through the um, pot and right the way through into the soil below because this is a very windy garden and we just want to make sure that there's no root rock with the tree. So I'm now round in the vegetable patch and the next thing to do is to lift the box hedging that I'm going to use around the amylanchia trees. So this box hedging has been in for quite a while now, maybe about two years, so it's a bit of a struggle to get out but um, it will come out in the end. 
so now that I've got the um, box hedges out the next thing to do is just to dig around to where the amylanchia pot is um, and make a bit of a trench and then I'm going to lower the box hedging around the, um, the plastic pot. So this is the box hedging, um, we've used four and there's quite a lot left, in fact there's loads left, um, there's more over here as well, so yeah there's no shortage of box. So I'm a bit tired, I've got I think about four box hedges in but it's quite hard going. So Alistair has come to my aid um, and he's very good at digging holes, one of the reasons I married you Ayal. Very good at digging holes. So, um, and he also comes with an array of um, shovels and spades, which makes the job a bit easier than my rubbish spade. So, he's got various ones. We seem to be unearthing an awful lot of massive stones. Um, it's interesting to see um, when we're digging, not so much there, but when I was digging before, over here, you can see the sand, I don't know if you can see there, but the particles of sand, um, I was hitting just pure sand down the bottom, I'll show you over here. So this is um, the sand that's in the soil, so it is very sandy. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of massive stones, um, but otherwise the soil is quite fertile. It is surprisingly quite dry, isn't it, even though we've had all that rain. But hopefully you can start to see the look that we're going for. It's at the moment obviously very scruffy, but um, when it's all trimmed, it will begin to take take um, shape. So incidentally, um, we just got this box hedging about two years ago. Um, somebody was selling it on um, Facebook and it was just going for about 30 pounds, which is I think about $40. Um, they didn't want to obviously change in their garden round and it was just going to be chucked. So um, we got it and um, obviously there's a risk of box blight, but we isolated it. We put it around in the old vegetable patch on its own where it's been for the last two years. We didn't really have a use for it. I think we did use some of it in another part of the garden, but other than that, we didn't really need it. So we just left it there and it's been there until it's been now it's needed. So it's very established, um, very mature plants, very vigorous. Um, and I think it will give quite an instant impact. So this is a clump of Gora uh, Landimery that um, I grew last year. So it's just sitting here next to some salvia. And there's another clump over here. So it seems to have made it through the winter. It's got some new shoots at the bottom. I've got quite a lot of it dotted all over the place. So I'll group it all together and then we'll, we'll be able to use it along with um, some more ones that I'm planting from seed. So hopefully you can see the area behind me starting to take shape. We've got the Amylanchia trees in and they look really lovely. I'm really pleased with those. Box hedge has gone in um, and Alice has just given it a, just a very light trim just so we can get the feel of um, what it will be like. Um, so that's looking good. The area around about, I just want to start making, um, putting in some plants around there. So we've got some, the Verbena bonariensis, which seeds all over the garden. So I've got plenty of that. So I'm just digging that up and I'll put that in. I've also got, before I put that in, I've also got some um, of the little drumstick alliums. So I've got 25 of those. It's not really the right time to plant alliums. They should have been in the autumn. However, these ones flower much, much later. They're sort of in the sort of, August, I think, July, August time that they flower. So they're starting to shoot. So I'll just put them in and see what happens. Um, and then I've got this, um, quite a few of these Gora plants. I don't know if I can split them, but I can certainly try and take some cuttings. I'll cut it right back and then any ones that have got little shoots on them like there, I'll just stick them in the ground and see if they'll shoot. But I can grow plenty of that from seed. That was really successful growing from seed. And then I've got um, the Melania um, grasses as well to go in. So I think we've got quite a lot of stock really. So I'm going to get on and do that. 
and then probably next week sometime or when I've got more time I'll take some cuttings from the um, the Sarka cocker. So I'll just show you this. This is um, this is some of the grasses. Um, I bought one plant originally. This is a Melenia Carulia Strathinquil. Um, it's a, a neat grass with purple flowers um, and it gives some nice autumn colour as well. So um, I bought one plant last summer and I split it. There is a picture on here, I don't know if you can see, um, of what it looks like. So it's got some sort of nice um, golden autumn colour. Um, it doesn't look like much. It looks like a load of dead plants here, but as you can see, I've got mm, like maybe eight or so plants. So the plan is, is to use those in the area um, um, around where I've put the box. So we've now got all the box hedging in on this um, side and it looks obviously very shaggy compared to this side. This side's looking a bit more, a bit nicer. So we'll give this a light prune as well. And then I'm just going to do what I did before. I'm just going to randomly uh, throw some um, of these little allium bulbs and then I'll plant them. I'm trying not to walk on it, but I must admit it's easier said than done. Um, so, I think it's looking quite nice. And the look I'm going for is a bit kind of impressionistic, I suppose you would describe, but quite light, quite airy plants. Um, and as I said before, some, some plants that will blow in the breeze and um, just look quite nice. So there are all the alliums um, scattered, so I'll just get on and, and plant those. So Al's just giving the box hedging that we've just planted a quick trim. We usually wait until May to trim the box, but just because it looks particularly scruffy and we want to get a bit of an idea of what the area will look like. So we've just gone ahead and done this now. And all that remains to be done is everything needs to be given a really good water and a really good soak and hopefully all the plants that we've planted today will take. So most of the hard work for this area is now done. The Amylanchias are in and it's lovely to see that the um, buds are just starting to open up. So I'm really excited to see what they look like. Um, obviously it doesn't look beautiful at the moment, but we've got to wait for the box hedging just to grow up and thicken and we can shape it better into a nice square. Um, we've planted some more Gora seeds, although I have moved the plants from last year into this area, but I have planted some more seeds just to make sure the area is very full and with the grasses as well. And then I've also taken some cuttings from the Sarcococca plant that we bought at the nursery. So fingers crossed that takes because uh, I think that would look quite nice. And the other thing is this area is quite heavily in shade and Sarcococca does quite well in those conditions. And also it produces flowers which would look and smell nice in the winter. So I think that it is quite a good choice if we can get it to grow. So other than that, I um, hope you can imagine what it will look like. Um, and the hard work's done, so let's just wait and see what it looks like in the spring and the summer. Thank you very much for watching and join us in the next video. Bye for now.